Hey everybody, hey, this is Take Two. Thanks for joining in. This is Dr. Julie Steinauer, and today's topic is going to be a little bit on the controversial side. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, why not just jump right into it, okay? So, uh, my patients know me as Dr. Julie or Dr. Julie Steinauer, and I just want to say thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you join us on the replay, go ahead and drop a comment down below that you've joined us on the replay so that I can know who's joining live versus replay. All right, so, wow, why on earth am I even approaching this topic of talking about shots and vaccinations? Well, quite honestly, I literally had to deal with this in my clinic just this morning, and it came up where a patient's mom who um, brought her daughter in, uh, her first daughter has been through our therapy program, her second daughter she wanted to have evaluated because she was just having some symptoms that sounded very similar to what daughter number one had. And so we evaluated and sure enough, we found out that daughter number two has an eye turn or a strabismus. And through the topic of conversation, vaccinations came up. Now today is not my duty, nor my job, nor my purpose to dig into whether or not you should vaccinate your child. I certainly have strong feelings on this one, as many people do, but that's not what I'm here to discuss today. What I am here to discuss today is what kind of results you may see as after you have someone who's been vaccinated. So whether someone has received their measles, mump, and rubella, which is MMR, whether they've had a hep C vaccination, whether they've gone through um, you know, having a flu shot, it doesn't really matter what, um, maybe they've actually had the chickenpox vaccination. It doesn't really matter what the vaccination is. There are just some things that you need to be aware of, and there are some possibilities that are, um, you know, case studies that are out there that you can go and Google and look at to see. There are some correlations between binocular vision problems and vaccinations. Now, why on earth? Well, Again, we're not. We're going to try to stay as least controversial here today as we possibly can about this. <laughs> the idea is not that I get flooded with all kinds of crazy comments, okay? But I do want you to know again and be aware. Okay, it's very common after a vaccination because some vaccines do contain a bit of live virus that's basically insulting your neurological system, and you know the idea is, is that your body will fight that off. Um, well, if your body doesn't fight that off because maybe perhaps you're immune compromised, it depends on where the virus is going to go in the body, right? The virus can go anywhere. So it can kind of come in and attack us in any particular way in the body as fashion goes, um, as it goes, I'm sorry. And what can occur then is that um, you may actually have it settle in some of the nerve roots. Um, and one of those particular nerve roots may have something to do with how the eyes align. So it's very, very common that the facial nerve can be affected. It's common that um, nerve three, six, um, they can also be affected. Those are very common nerves that send impulses to specific muscles within the eye that control the alignment of the eyes up and down, even the eyelids and the eyes laterally, and even some diagonal action with, um, we're considering um, the cranial nerve number four. So any of these cranial nerves can be affected if the virus tends to kind of attach onto that and it kind of latches onto that area and is going to cause a problem there. Okay, so as a result of that, if you notice any kind of facial asymmetry with your child after they've been vaccinated or received some sort of a shot, if you notice any kind of lagging of a lid, we call that ptosis where one lid kind of looks like it's a little bit droopy, down than the other and it might just be mild right it might just be kind of like a mild droop or it could be something that's really droopy and noticeable facial asymmetry would be like a lag on one side or a drooping on one side or one side kind of pulling up like this okay so almost some of the things that you would see in someone who's had a stroke now we did not witness any of these things in our patient today and i'm not giving away any names or any information that identifies that particular person but this mom feels really strongly about it and i'm pretty positive that as we talked this morning um, she knew i was going to be discussing some information online today about this in my video topic so it's important to share with you, okay? Facial asymmetry, droops, things with the eyelids going on that are different. Maybe even that you notice that your child has some symptoms of like vertigo. And this is extremely common, is actually what happened to me after receiving a flu shot, but I developed vertigo that was very, very intense. And um, this child this morning also did too, and she'll just have periods of 
um, dizziness that pop up just sporadically on from time to time and things will spin and move nystagmus or an eye movement that kind of flutters like this where the eye doesn't stay still it can happen in all positions of gaze or specific positions of gaze like if a person looks up into one side we might see the eyes flutter um, but it's real common after any kind of neurological insult which again a vaccination can sometimes do that to us unfortunately then we might actually see some of these things come out so is it possible then that after a shot you see your child suddenly develop a strabismus yes it is um, specifically if your child has gone through having a seizure post shot then it definitely or a high fever definitely is a possibility that these things can come out so a strabismus or an eye turn would be an eye turn maybe that's in, an eye turn that's out, or maybe even an eye turn that goes up. Okay, so those would be the three most common things that we would see. And there are some variations of that, but those are just the most common. So yes, it is possible that after some sort of vaccination or shot, your child may develop some binocular symptoms. Here's when you need to know, do I take this seriously and do I go get help about it? Okay, if it doesn't go away within generally the first um, couple of weeks after having had the, vac the vaccination or the shot, then we're typically saying that, you know what, this is, is something that's here to stay. If it doesn't go away after that high fever, if it doesn't go away after having that, you know, um, maybe possible epilepsy moments. Um, if it doesn't go away and it sticks around, then it's probably most likely going to be here to stay and it may need to be addressed. And I, well, this can be scary, certainly give us a call. Um, if you know someone who actually has experienced this or maybe is looking for answers related to this, then please drop their name down in the comment and tag them in this video. Because I'll tell you what ends up happening for many people is that most of the time when these things occur, it's very hard to get any kind of information from the doctor. And it can be very frustrating on the side of the family, particularly the mom or the dad Dad, if they're dealing with this sudden onset of symptoms their child has had and there seemingly doesn't you know appear to be a good reason behind it it is very frustrating um, and it's certainly something that is very scary so once again if you know someone who's experienced this or you, you yourself have um, or you know someone who's looking for this drop us a comment down below just you know we're trying to keep this very positive we want it to be upbeat we don't want it to be a thing talking bad about vaccinations or anything like that we can certainly have those opinions and if you want you know to talk with me about it personally send me a private message um, but we're here just to inform and we're here to talk about the very real effects and things that actually do happen and we see it on a regular basis in our clinic I've seen it happen with adults I've seen it happen with children so if you would like more information about what we do at Vision for Life go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com um, certainly there is a way if you would like to be part of our on um, automatic kind of once a month mailing that we put out that's a great article and information just about vision and many many things that are really important then comment down below that you'd like to be on our email list we'll get you on that um, if you're a doctor or a therapist who's looking for ways to kind of you know take things to the next level then comment down below I, I'd like to go to the next level with vision therapy and treating my patients and I'm going to contact you with some options of things that we're doing these days Gosh, isn't it amazing that we have all of this stuff right at our fingertips? We can look this up. And if you think this is something that's like non-existent, then just go Google shots, vaccinations, and binocular vision problems, or shots, vaccinations, and strabismus. Um, certainly you can throw in their vertigo that's a big one um, and I can tell you there's all kinds of information about that that you can find online so um, with that I'm gonna say if you have questions comments anything of that nature please feel free to drop them down below tag people if you know you know are searching for answers and they're wondering is this really like, does this really happen to me or is this just like do I make this up what's going on um, and we would love to be able to talk with them with that I'm gonna say thank you so much for joining in I hope this was helpful I hope it's just raising an awareness and again we're not here to you know bash or talk bad about vaccinations or anything like that we're just raising some awareness and uh, with that I'm gonna say thanks so much and have an awesome day see ya